everyone, and welcome to this episode of Pathways to Perform. We hope these real stories from real people resonate to help guide you on your path to perform at your very best in any field. Today, we have an extraordinary gentleman with us. I am totally pumped. I can't believe he's here. His talents are so fierce. He has pretty much touched every single realm of the industry. He has done film, television, Broadway, off-Broadway, national tours, regional tours, and in his spare time, he has recorded not one, but two solo albums. It's pretty unbelievable. He's had the great pleasure to originate a role on Broadway. He was Ren in the hit Footloose. And then in addition to that, his talent is so, again, that word fierce, his range spans so far that he has played three of the coveted roles in Jesus Christ Superstar, you named it, Jesus, Judas, and Pontius Pilate. In addition to that, he was Tommy DeVito, of course, in Jersey Boys, and let's not forget Roger in Rent. He is extraordinary, he is so talented, but most important, he is a wonderful human being. I love this man. Please welcome Jeremy Kushner. Yay! Wow. Full blush. I that that that's an intro that I'm just gonna record that and play it before I enter every room. I think you should. With I do, I will. I'm gonna <laughs> and both anything we need to do for you, of course. But uh, is it weird to hear the kind of span of your career in one little sound bite? Uh yeah, I mean it's always I, look the thing the thing about this career, and it doesn't matter where you are in it, because you know it is it's not it's, it doesn't go like this. It kind of goes like this. Um, it's always shinier from somebody else's point of view than from yours. Uh, you, you always look sort of at, you always look across that fence at the other person's yard and see how much greener it is. So it is, <clears throat> it is nice to, to, to hear it every once in a while so that you remind, that you can remember that you, you were allowed to feel gratefulness and also feel some pride in, in, in the work that you've accomplished. And so thank you. No, it's it's an honest, uh, I guess, nod to you and who you are. So I'm excited to learn more about it. I'm excited to hear your story with our listeners. And so I think we should start from the very beginning. I mean, did you wake up one day knowing this is it? I'm going to be an actor, a director, a producer, or was it something that kind of came to you in, a, in, in a, like a moment or through time? I think I was pretty lucky. Um, growing up uh, at a pretty young age, I, I liked, I was sort of an extrovert when it came to performing. I never, I don't think I ever had the, the, the idea myself that, you know, that Broadway or, or TV or film was something that I could do. Um, it was, it didn't feel like a possibility. It felt like something that was totally out in the atmosphere. I loved performing, but I started taking classes at um, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, uh, just like a musical theater class and then some jazz and tap. And um, and I discovered that I really liked it. Uh, and again, I was, I was really lucky because I was able to do that at a really young age. Um, I found this stuff at like eight or nine years old. I had a really good talented group of kids that were coming up at the same time as me. So we kind of had like this really cool, um, uh, I don't know, it was like a gang of these young talent, like really, really, really super talented people. Um, and we all sort of traveled together. There was a great summer theater in my hometown. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, originally. Um, and uh, this place, Rainbow Stage, is kind of like a, a, a really a smaller version of the place that we met um, in Kansas, uh, Kansas City Starlight. Uh, but it's an outdoor theater that uh, does, you know, we it's a shorter season because in Canada we have a shorter summer. Um, but we would do, you, you know, two big, they would do two big musicals uh, a year while I was living there. And so I started to get involved with that. And that became sort of my summer camp, my thing that I did every year was doing a, a full scale production musical where they would bring in people from Toronto, which is, you know, our Canada's version of New York. Uh, so we'd have these great professional people come in with local actors performing together. And we, really, we had this great opportunity to learn from them. Um, and then uh, I just sort of knew at that point, once I started doing it, it just became like, well, this is, this is what I do. 
Uh, and so I decided that I was going to move uh, to Toronto um, and become an actor. You know, it was just like anything else. It was like I decided I was going to move to Toronto and become a, an architect or a lawyer or it was just that was going to be my course. Um, my parents were a little bit more confused about it. Um, because I think that they felt like I did when I started, which was like, well, this isn't like a, this isn't a thing that people do. Like, you know, you turn on, you turn on West Side Story on you, on your VCR and you watch these, you know, incredible, amazing actors, but they're not real people. They're like these weird, uh, uh, like they don't exist in a reality. So after I had worked, I was like, no, this is something that you do. This is, you know, these are all normal people. These are all people that I now know and that I correspond with and that I hang out with. And, um, and so I, I can just be one of them. I was really lucky and probably a little bit naive or well, probably a lot naive about it. Um, but I just really felt like that's what I wanted to do. It's what I could do. I'm also inherently pretty lazy, Keisha. I'm not going to lie. So when something sort of came natural to me, I was like, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Not a whole bunch of work to put into this, but I can start and I can start on the ground floor and then go for that. Um, now, that being said, there was a lot of work. I took a lot of dance classes. Yeah, of I took a lot of singing classes. Right, right. But I, but there was, you know, it never really felt like chemistry class. Yeah. It never felt like something that I was like, <laughs> okay, well, I have to get through this to do this. Although sometimes there were, I'm not, you know, and you're going to hate hearing this, but there were some times when those dance classes did feel like chemistry class. Um, I, I well, am. I feel like that to me sometimes. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cause I'm a fair mover, but I, I definitely don't have a dancer brain. Like I don't pick things up super fast so sure. I can get there, but it takes me a little bit of work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I moved to Toronto and then uh, I started, I got my first big professional job uh, within a few months of living there. They were doing a production of Tommy. Uh, the, the original Broadway production happened, then the national tour happened, then Toronto, the first Canadian company happened. And that was going to be the third big company um, and ended up booking that. That was a whole, that's a whole long, that we could have a whole episode just about that process. But, um, and then I, I that was sort of the, sort of the beginning of the beginning of the end. Keisha it was the beginning of the end for me. I, I was, I knew that this was going to be my thing. Okay. So, you know, you're in Toronto, in Toronto and then I read the story that you, you actually got on a bus. Yes. So from Toronto to New York city. And I want to know, <laughs> this is the audition for Footloose. What is going through your head? That is not a subway. No, it's ride. not a scene. It's it not is a, a ten hour ride of you just in your head. Right? Yeah, yeah I was I had been out of work for a while at that point, so I think that probably added to the insanity of it. Oh. Um, but I got a call from my agent. He basically said at the time, my Canadian agent at the time, and he said, you know, if you can be in New York tomorrow, I have an audition for you for this new production of Footloose, the musical. And I was like, Okay, I fi I'll figure it out. So I called a friend of mine because I was not gonna do it by myself. Um and we sort of scrounged up the, whatever it was, 80 bucks for a round trip bus ticket. We got on the bus that night at 11 o'clock at night. We arrived in New York at 11 o'clock the following morning. So we basically traveled all night long. Um, we called a friend or like a, an acquaintance that we had known. And uh, she let us come over and sort of use her bathroom, got cleaned up. And then we went straight over to the audition. Uh, after the crazy. after the audition, it was crazy because he the 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 um, the casting director came out into the hallway after the audition. He said he was like, "So where are you staying? Because we're gonna want you to come back tomorrow." I was like, "Well, oh, I'm not staying. I was just gonna get back on a bus and go just home tonight." On a bus, just came in. Oh, he was bus. like, "No, you have to stay." I was like, "Well, that's cool, but like, I don't I don't have money to get a hotel. I don't have any money." So uh, he said, "Okay, we'll go somewhere, and I'll I'll figure something out. Just call in every half an hour, and we'll we'll figure something. Out. I'll figure we'll figure something out for you." So I did that, and we went. My friend and I went to a bar, and um, I was really sort of like, "This is this isn't going to happen. This is whatever." I called in, and he said, "I look, you can't tell anybody this, but I'm I'm house sitting in a par uh, an apartment for a friend of mine in in my building." They're not home. You can sleep in that apartment for the night. Just don't tell anybody. And then tomorrow you'll have your call back and then you can go get back on the bus. So I did that. That is incredible in itself. And so scary. Cause like, here I am, I'm like, well, this is like definitely the beginning of like a, a law and order episode where the casting director is like, yeah, you can sit in this house that I have. 
Don't tell anybody, though. Don't tell anybody, but stay oh. here. And you're a stranger, and I have I've never met you before. But go ahead and sleep here. Yeah, it was. I was. I was. I, I had my share of fear going in. <laughs> all right. Well, you pull it together, Jeremy. You'll be fine. You do what you got to do. That's all. Exactly. That's right. Um, so the next day, I got up and went to that callback. Uh, I sang with the girl who ended up with Jennifer Laura Thompson, who ended up um, playing Ariel in the production. Um, I read with the girl who played uh, uh, Rusty. And it was quite a long process. I, I, again, I left the room. The choreographer um, came out in the hall and said, can you dance? I said, yeah, sure, yeah. And he said, great. And he went back in the room. And then the, the uh, um, casting director came back out in the hall and said, okay, you booked it. Go get your bus and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And so I got back on a bus by my, this time it was by myself because my friend had left the day before. And I spent 11 hours, and this is before cell phones, so I was just 11 hours on a bus by myself not being able to tell anybody this news uh, that I was, that I just booked my first big gig. Now, it was Broadway a work show. <laughs> it wasn't, see, here's the problem. Yeah, it wasn't a Broadway show yet. Yeah. So if I, if I knew now, if I knew then what I know now, I never would have taken a 10-hour bus ride to, to audition for a workshop of Footloose the Musical on Broadway. Never. Never. But, man, I'm glad I did. Yeah. I think that's all part of it. And, I mean, the coolest, one of the coolest memories I have on Broadway is actually seeing you in that role. So a dear friend of mine from Pittsburgh that I went to college with, Billy Hartong, was with you on that stage. Love him so much. So I went to see him in the show and actually got to see your performance. You, I, I was awestruck your performance you just yeah. command the stage and your presence but you give so much of the other actors and you had that audience literally just like eating out of the palm of your hand whatever you they just leaned into you it was it, you were amazing yeah. and so do you have any specific memories of that first broadway oh, man. show so i mean like a <laughs> wonderful memory i'm sure it's one of the ones that stays with you you know yeah, i mean I've, I've so many there's like so many, it's like imprinted. Um, it's hard, you know, get, getting your first, you know, your your first big New York break being a brand new show in a brand new musical playing the lead. Uh, it's probably too much because then you don't, at, at 23, you don't really get that like, it's gonna be easy. Like, it's not gonna be easy still. Like you think that, okay, well now I'm set. I mean, I'll still have to audition and stuff, but I'm set now. And if I don't really have to worry. Um, and well, that's not true. But what I did love is all of the wonderful people. You know, Billy not only, I not only shared the stage with Billy, we shared a dressing room and he became a mentor. He became a big brother. Um, he became a pain in the ass. I love this. Um, <laughs> and we, but we, we still, we stay in touch to this day. I, you know, we, we hang out, we see each other whenever I come into town and whenever he comes here, because now he's got full grown, a whole house full of full grown children. Um, and some of them are in the business. They, one of his daughters came last summer for a dance, just to come and take a bunch of dance classes with friends and we hung out and it's really cool. So that kind of stuff is really, really special. All of those friendships that you make are, are, are to me, some of the best moments. Um, but I will tell you, you know, being on a Broadway stage, in an opening, you know, opening night of a brand new musical on Broadway is pretty, pretty exciting. It doesn't, it doesn't get less exciting, I guess is the, yeah, it never gets old. Oh, that's fantastic. I love to hear that. And so, you know, let's kind of circle back to what you said. You're 23, mm -hmm. hit show, the lead, Broadway, you got it made. And oh, then yeah. you realize that, wait a second, you know, so the show closes, yeah. then what? What happened? Well, I was actually, I was pretty lucky about, I was lucky right at first because I actually had booked, um, I had done the show for all, for two years. I'd done Footloose for almost two years at this point. And so it was time for me to do something else. Um, as, as much as I still loved doing it, I, I knew that if I didn't do something else, that it would, it would be, it would start to become harder and harder to, to be anything other than Ren in Footloose. Mm -hmm. um, so, I auditioned for the new Matt Scalar, Chad Beglin musical. Um, it was called The Rhythm Club. Uh, it was their first big venture into musical theater, and it was an amazing piece. Um, I still hope to this day that something, that 
that someone dusts it off and figures out to do it because it's a beautiful, beautiful musical. Um, and so I was really excited. So I was like, oh, I'm great. See, this is how it works. My next big musical just auditioned. I got it. I got it lined up. We're going to go out of town to DC. Then we're going to go to Chicago and then back on Broadway. Perfect. Um, well, we went to DC to the Signature Theater and uh, then something happened with, uh, I never fully knew, but it was, it all had to do with money. None, none of it had to do with the show, unfortunately, or fortunately for them, fortunately for the show, but unfortunately for all of us, it, it ended up closing out of town. And then it was, that's when I got my first taste of, oh, so it's not super easy. Um, Cause there I was, you know, no, now no job. Um, it was about five months worth of working or three or four months worth of working on a regional contract. So not Broadway money. Um, so you're not saving at this point. That's right. Um, but thinking fully, but not, but continuing to spend because thinking fully that this is just, you know, the next step is Broadway. So I'm not worried. Uh, and then it was a while. It was a minute before I had another job. It was probably a full summer. It was definitely one of those lost summers uh, that it was a lot of hanging out with my friends in my twenties. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think it took, yeah, it was probably not till the fall of the following year that, uh, that I got a call because I had done rent in Toronto prior to doing Footloose in New York um, as a swing in Toronto. And so I got a call in the fall, I guess it was, it, to see if I wanted to go out on the road with, with rent as Roger. Um, and at that point, I was like, yes, 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 I need a job. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, you know, that's the other thing. You never think like, okay, well, once you're on Broadway, you never have to do tours again. You never have to do regional again. That's, you know, that's, you're past that. Um, well, the, the, one of the things that was, I guess, good that I discovered early on too, was that some of your best, um, moments, some of your best performances, some of your best memories of live performance are going to be regional. They're going to be, um, uh, uh, uh touring productions. They're going to be all the things that you think that Broadway performers are too good for, or that, you know, they're not. Um, I just recently got to go back. I'm jumping around a lot, but I just recently, last year, went back to um, to St. Louis, and it was my first time working at the Muni, which I absolutely loved. And it, I got to do Footloose at the Muni, playing the Reverend this time. Oh, um, fun! And it was amazing. And it That's reminded right. me how much I loved just working and... Uh, uh, Community. It didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter that yeah. it was in St. Louis, or it was on the road, or it was on Broadway, or it was off-Broadway. Um, yes, that on Broadway feeling is something that is really special, but when you're together with a group of people and you're putting something together really fast, or you have a really small amount of time to put it together, and you just get, you only get a few times to do it together, it becomes really special too, in a different way. So, um, I don't know, I got, I think I got to learn that early on as well, that it, it, it's not less, it's, they're all just different of the same wonderfulness, I guess. That's a great way to put that. You know, it's like a comp, you know, like you said, it's a shorter amount of time. So we, you just appreciate it in a different way. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of different, but the same. It's really yeah. interesting. And so I met you in New York for the second time, actually, because of, mm -hmm. you know, Footloose, of course. But uh, you auditioned for Jesus Christ Superstar for Jack and I. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if you know this, but you auditioned for Jesus. And yep. you walked out of the room, I looked at Jack, and I said, he needs to audition for Judas. Jack said, you don't ask someone like him to audition for a different role, <laughs> right? Which is probably normal, right? And me, the choreographer, doesn't care. I'm like, well, why yeah. not? But he's and good. Then, he should be doing that instead. And someone asked, and, and you said, yes. Yeah, I'll come do it. You walked in the room, completely changed gears, and auditioned for the role of Judas, and of course, got it. What's amazing to me is, number one, you said, yes, you were humble enough to go, yeah, I'll do it. Let's just do the thing. You came and, and then you did it. You just, I swear, you were gone for a minute and then walked back in the room and were a completely different person and the role was yours. Thanks. How do you do that? I think that, you When know, you said humble, I think that it's an H word, but to, at that point it might've been hungry. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that's the other thing people have to know getting into this business is like- that's great. You never stop being both theoretically, um, metaphorically, and actually physically hungry um, in this business. 
because you uh, a lot of times are only as good as the last thing you did. Um, and so at that point, I was like, yeah, I, I, I would like to do Superstar. And I hadn't, I don't think, I think I'd been, I can't remember the thing that I did, the last thing that I did before that, but it had been a minute since I'd worked again. So, uh, and it always feels like longer than, than it actually is because it's not really that long. My, I, I had pretty standard, like between big contracts, I would have about a nine month period, which is actually a long time. But sometimes you need to like, like let it go too, because, you know, even though it's, you know, musical theater, a lot of times you carry, you carry a lot of whatever show you're doing. And in my early career, I didn't do a lot of light shows, you know, Rent and like Tom, like these were sort of heavier shows if you really take them on. But when I got, when I got there, I was like, okay, well, and then I, I thought about Superstar and I really realized that the better role is Judas. It's a better role anyway. Such a um, great it, role. <laughs> such a great role. It's, well, it really is like, it's, it's Hamilton, right? So it is the story of Hamilton, but it's seen through the eyes of, um, uh, of Burr. So Burr is actually a better role. He's got better songs. Um, he's got, he gets, he's the narrator. You're seeing this story through his perspective. Um, and it's the same thing with Superstar. For me, it was, it was, sure, it's Jesus Christ Superstar, but it's Judas's show. You're seeing this whole story play out through his eyes. Um, so as long as I can, even if I have to fake it, as long as I can make it like, that's the, that's the part you want to play anyway. So just go and get that one. And then also it's a challenge, right? Like one of my favorite things is a, a challenge. I, as much as sometimes you might go, come on, I worked on this audition for three weeks and now you want me to go outside and totally turn it around in an hour. <laughs> 360. <laughs> I mean, you um, just, you came right back. Yeah. And I think that part of it is, part of it is a little bit like, not an, not a, like a, one of those, but a little bit like, okay, maybe not everybody is going to be able to do this. So I'm going to show you that I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. That's going to be, that's going to be my, that's going to be how I win today, regardless of whether or not I book this. Because I think that that's something that you have to do every time you audition, because there's so much direct failure in this business. You know, you audition for a hundred things, you book two of them. So you have to find a way to win in some way every time you walk in that room, whether it's I'm conquering a new song, I'm auditioning for a director or a choreographer or a, a, or a casting director that I've never auditioned for before. I really feel like I nailed that this time. You know, I get really nervous when I do this in audition. So how am I going to conquer that? Every time you go in, you have to win or you're just going to stop. You know, there's, you can't lose that many times and continue to do this. It would be heartbreaking. So yeah, I guess maybe that was it for me that time. It was like, I'm going to win this just by not just by accomplishing, turning around and doing something completely different for them in not enough, not enough time. Yeah, that is, I love that. You have to find some way to win. That's yeah. going to, that's the title of this podcast. I love that. I, but perfect, it's so perfect. important. So important, you know? Yeah. So just for your psyche, right? Just for your own, that's right. like you don't, you, cause you lose it. You lose it. If you lose every time you go, if, if you lose as much as you are going to lose in this business, cause there is not enough jobs for everybody to win every time. There just isn't. It doesn't matter how great you are. Sutton Foster has not gotten jobs. Uh, 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 Hugh Jackman has not gotten jobs. There are lots of there. It, it's just all different levels of that. So yes, I, I think that, I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, yeah, I love that. And you just learn from it too. You learn and grow and develop. The list is endless. It's all ends up being positive eventually. Yeah. So, you know, you played that role. You had such fun up there. So we had fun. It was just one of the greatest memories of my life. It was, I got to like yeah. watching that sun, watching the sunset as I'm singing um, uh, Heaven on Their Minds, like that, like probably the closest that I will now knowing at 45, like the closest that I will ever come to being like Roger Daltrey rock star, like watching that sunset over, what is it? 5,000, 7,000 people and you're singing Heaven on Their Minds. Like, come on, yeah. that's pretty awesome. It's pretty, it was, a, I, I was very, very grateful every night. It was great. And so, and know, tired. Yes, a lot. It's a marathon. That was not any show. No, we, 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 that was a, we, you, you guys put together a hard piece. Um, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> hard, but fun. 
That's hard to know. So, you know, you've played a lot of these different roles. Do you, is there one specific role that you were most attracted to or stays with you, you know, holds a special place in your heart? I'm sure there's more than one and yeah. for different reasons, but are, you've just had a dynamic career. And so is there something that holds, holds that special place? Yeah, I think without a doubt, it probably, musical theater wise, it's definitely Tommy DeVito. It's that, that role in Jersey Boys was, it always felt like once I got into that part, I was like, oh, this is mine. Um, I never, ever felt, you know, nothing against anybody who's ever played any of the roles that I've done, but, you know, Roger was always going to be Adams. I never felt, I never felt like, I, I felt like I did a good job of it, but no one was going to be Adam. He, he came out of nowhere. He was a rock. He was an action. He was the role. Um, uh, uh, um, Ren was mine, but it was Kevin Bacon's. You know what I mean? I got oh, to be the musical sense. theater Kevin Bacon, but it's, but it's always going to be Kevin Bacon's. Kevin Bacon. mm -hmm. um, but when I did, uh, uh, Jersey Boys, I really got to the point where I was like, this is my part. This is like really, like I really felt like I know who this guy is. Um, and I really liked him, even though like he was like the kind of guy that you hate to love or love to hate. That's like, those are my favorite. Those parts are my favorite. And he really was that kind of character. Um, he just passed away recently, um, which is why I, I'm speaking to him in the past tense. But um, the the actual Tommy DeVito, not not Christian, who played it. Um, uh, but uh, so yeah, that's that's one of my most memorable. It was uh, uh, a super fun. Um, I don't know. He was just really great to embody. It was really great to be that kind, have that kind of ego. Um, and to embody that, I guess. Yeah, it was just fun. I love, and I love the piece. I just think that um, the, the, the book is such a good book. It's a, it really is a play about a band. So it's not a musical. It's just, it happens to be that the characters who are in the, are in the play are singers. So they have to sing. Um, to me, it felt, it always felt like that. So it felt, it felt like I got to flex that way too. Um, so yeah, but then um, that being said, uh, not too long ago, um, I met the love of my life in Pittsburgh, um, doing my very first uh, uh, Shakespeare at, uh, uh, at the Pittsburgh Public. Um, so, and getting to play Iago, who is even more going in that direction. I mean, he's a sociopath. So that, I don't think Tommy DeVito was a sociopath, but but Iago was a sociopath and that was really fun. Um, probably one of my most memorable roles only because of what I, what I had to conquer um, for myself to, to do the part. It was just, it's such a humongous role and to, to play this humongous role in a genre that was really new to me. Um, and, and it was one of those things where I was like, I, I never felt like I was going to be able to do Shakespeare because I'm a dumb musical theater actor. Like we don't, we're not smart enough to do Shakespeare. Um, but what I discovered, well, I have the greatest, greatest Shakespeare mentor in the world. His name is Joseph Saravo. Uh, he's here in New York. He really believed in me. And, uh, t basically taught me that people who sing at actually get Shakespeare get it better because they're not afraid of the musicality of the language. They're not afraid of the poetry of the language because you've sung on stage, like you've acted, but you've also sung. So if you can do that, you're not afraid of giving way to some of the poetry and giving way to some of the rhyme and the verse. Um, so I, uh, uh, yeah, that would be my other most, most memorable role. And plus I met my Robin Abramson, who's this, one of the most talented actors I've ever met in my life. Um, and I get to share a, a life with her now too. So yeah, that probably makes souls. it the, mo the most memorable. I love that. And I love you, Robin. <laughs> I'm so happy. The best. She's I, the best. You're both just perfect for each other. It's perfect. So uh, let's see. We talked a little bit about musical theater. And now mm -hmm. you've touched upon theater a little bit. Film, TV, You've kind of dabbled in it all. Recently did an independent film with your brothers. 
what, you know, you have this gigantic crossover. What do you enjoy more? Musical theater, Shakespeare, TV, film? Oh. I, mean, I think I like it all. When I'm, when I'm doing it, I like it all. Okay, um, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. We'll, I'll come back to the, the theater in a second, but I think what I've discovered that I really, really like the best is directing. Um, we, oh, that's yeah, my, exciting. Okay. You know, my brother wrote a play, um, the same brother that wrote the movie that we'll come back to. He wrote a play a couple years ago. And um, I, cause he's an, he's an auteur. So he, he's one of those, he's one of those filmmakers that, you know, he writes it, he directs it. It's, it's his, it need he needs to have the create, it's his whole, it's gotta be his. Um, but when it came to plays, I said, okay, well you wrote this play, but I really think that it's going to behoove you to not direct this. I think you should let me direct this because it'll just be better for you. And I convinced him. I mean, I think that he probably was like, that's fine, whatever, Jeremy, I don't really care. I don't want to do plays for the rest of my life because you're never going to make any money anyway. So, but uh, getting to direct that play really reminded me of how much I love. Um, I love the creative process. I love performing. I'm never going to get over it. I will always perform. But if I had my choice, I'd never leave the rehearsal room. I would just be in that room creating with a bunch of fantastic actors and musicians and designers and just having all of these minds together and and um figuring out problems I, I realized is like one of my favorite things to do so when you can get a group of people together and figure out a problem whether it's a scene or a, a moment or a number or a, 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 a the end of a play or whatever it is it's really that's the most inspiring to me so directing that will be that would be my main choice um and honestly directing whatever tv film stage musicals theater uh, straight theater whatever it is i just love being in that chair and part of it is because i'm a little bit type a but part of it is also because i i love that i also love the challenge of collaborating i love the challenge of being having somebody else come up with the 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 right idea like being a lot allowing myself to be wrong or allowing myself to allowing other people to shine in a moment um that's exciting to me both as a on a personal level because it's something that i feel like i could grow at um and on a, a professional level because it i think it also takes the right kind of you know you've been doing this you've been on that side of the table for a long time um well not that long but you know what i mean oh, yeah, um so you know what it's like to like you'd be in a room with a bunch of people that ha all have their own idea of how it should work and having the strength and the power of your own convictions and also the, the, the strength of your own ego to know when the right idea in the room is gonna win. It doesn't matter if it's mine or yours or theirs. Um, that having that kind of uh, uh, um, control over your own ego, I think is a really fun and hard and admirable thing. Uh, and the best directors I've ever, and choreographers I've ever worked with have always had that, that they were able to make you feel heard and um, also lead you in a way where you felt like if you didn't know what the answer was in that moment, that you knew that somebody in the room was going to have that answer and that you didn't, you never felt like, wow, unless I come up with it, we're, we're all, up the upper river right so what, what a wonderful realization for you at this oh. time in your life to kind of you know just see all of it now you know as an actor I love it. and you're you're collaborating with writers and on the other side of the table as a director it's 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 a wonderful realization to come to because then now there's you have so much experience to offer just from a different perspective as well I mean, yeah. you know, from the ground up, you've created roles and, of course, worked through these characters, but you're never going to forget kind of the person that is kind of pushing the paper or running for coffee. You're never going to forget that person because it's not who you are as a human being anyway. So. But that being said, so film, <laughs> then my brother, then my brother wrote this film. It probably happened in the other order. He wrote, he wrote the film. He's written a bunch of films. We did a, probably two or three um independent movies, small, tiny little shorts together first, uh, that then he, I remember I was uh, hanging out with my kids. Um, I just put them to bed one night and he said, he said, I want, I want you to read something I just finished. I was like, okay. And I read it 
and I bawled. I cried my face out, and I said, wow. uh, I, because I, I realized he had sort of written our mine and his story. Uh, it, it's it's you know thirteen times removed, but the way just the our really our our version of what it meant to become an adult. It's called the idea of manhood, but it really is the idea of being an adult um, and what that means um, and being a man in sort of a, a, a broader sense as far as like, well, what does it mean to grow up? Does it mean that you have to get married and have kids or does it mean that you, do you have to do that? Does, so he wrote this really beautiful movie um, that is available on Amazon Prime um, called The Idea of Manhood that, uh, that he then went about, not only wrote it, and directed it and co-produced it with his friend um melanie but uh got it made like it just like it, it boggles my mind that we that he did it um because it was a, such a, it's such a huge undertaking and i had no i mean i i had done a couple of small movies before but until you can see like how much goes into making something especially something that is totally independent as far as all the money that was raised was raised through friends and um a, a, a family and you know we just like begging people for uh, you know a, a buck here or you know can we borrow this or will you work for you know a couple of days uh it was amazing and so he got it made and it i really think it's a great it's a great little movie um He's got so many more things coming up that I'm really excited for him. But this was a huge, big deal because no, nobody made it for him. He did it himself. That's incredible. And so this is your brother, Serge. And My brother, Serge, yeah. You have a brother, Bryce, as well, right? Bryce scores ever since so Serge's very first, very first independent movie. Bryce has scored every single movie that Serge has made. Um, it's really cool, actually. I, and also, because I haven't been in every single movie that my brother's made, so I always get a little bit jealous that they are really sort of the <laughs> Duplass brothers, and I'm sort of like the Duplass cousin um, that is in a couple of the movies. But yeah, no, Bryce is an incredible musician. He's just like this crazy um, genius musician that uh, just is always, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't really even understand most of his genius because it's, he's really, really, again, I've got two really amazing, smart younger brothers. Um, and I'm just sort of the dumb older that brother who like, went to, like, sure they just like, exactly the same can make like, really good fart sounds um, <laughs> with his armpit. Uh, but they're, they're these like, just like Serge hands Bryce uh, a script and says, this is the idea. This is sort of the feeling. Maybe we'll send him like a couple of like Spotify tracks and to go like, this is sort of like the idea. And Bryce sends him something back and Serge sends it to me. He's like, look, listen to this. I was like, I'm... The, the beginning of, of Idea of Manhood is just like this like beautiful sort of long montage um, uh, uh, video moment um, that Bryce scored, but it's really sparse and really interesting. And like, I would never be able to come up with the, what it what it is that he came up with so anyway yeah they've they've worked together and and hopefully we will make many 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 more things how exciting okay so what is it like growing up in this in this house with these three gifted brothers I well mean, we all at one point acted together so we all went we all did rainbow stage that i spoke of earlier we were all i think that there was a couple of shows that we all did together we we all did a production of wizard of oz together that we were all like <laughs> Child actors in, um, but then I sort of I left the house at eighteen, so I didn't really grow up with them. It wasn't until we became sort of adults that we all became close. Uh, so it, it's been really what to me my my journey with my brothers and both emotionally and 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 sort of as siblings, but also as creative um, people started in my mid thirties uh, and it's been really quite wonderful to like oh, get to know them true. as humans. And um, yeah, I'm really lucky. I've got really, a really good, really fantastic family. Well, and it's, really. it's amazing because those are the relationships that you actually, as I've learned, as I get older, we're pretty much the same age, 47. Yep. I have, I have a greater appreciation for the connections that I have to my own sisters now 
even than I did 20 years ago. For sure. So it's interesting. It's just, I guess, part of that life cycle, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you, you know, it's, it happens. Everything sort of happens when it's supposed to happen. There's, you know, look, right. if I could, if I could just pile up all the regrets that I have, it, there would be plenty, but all of the things that I am truly, truly grateful for because of things that I screwed up or because of things that I missed or because of things that I didn't, you know, jobs I didn't get or places that I didn't go or people that I didn't keep in touch with. Everything has sort of led us, led me to the place that I'm supposed to be at right now. Um, and especially in times like this, I really have to believe that that is really true, that, that, that we have the power to sort of be our own, uh, our own, um, uh, we can sort of guide the way that our lives go, but there's also a certain amount of like, it, it's supposed, it's supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be, you're supposed to be where you are right now because something is going to be offered to you. It's, I've always sort of believed in the idea that it's not about the, it's not about what you get, but how you choose to deal with what you get it's not about the fact that you didn't book that show but what did you do how did you deal with that loss or how what what did you change about the next time that you auditioned or what yeah it really is to me about how you deal with your current situation and that's sort of life right because mm -hmm. nothing ever happens the way that we think it's going to happen both good and bad um things happen when you, like you always book the job that you think you screwed the audition up and you never book the job that you think you nailed. <laughs> um, you always, things, some people have really hard lives. I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna take that away from anybody. And I know it's really easy for me to say that like, yeah, it's supposed to, life happens the way it's supposed to happen. But, you know, I've had my share of, of sand kicked in my face and uh, over the, as, as I've gotten older, I've realized that like, oh, if I really can sort of track back something that I've really wanted to get or, um, a job that I really thought was mine. And then why, when I didn't book it, oh, that happened. And then that happened. Oh, and then that happened. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. It's a lot easier to see in hindsight, but I really do believe that. And again, it's another way that we have to, we have to get, we have to do that for ourselves to keep ourselves sane and to keep ourselves like, getting through a pandemic, um, you know, so it's all supposed to happen the way that it's supposed to happen. I, you know, I spent the past nine months in this house and recently discovered how much I love woodworking. I never would have had enough time or energy to buy a table saw and start just taking a piece of wood and going, I think I'm going to make something out of this and make something out of it that I really love and I feel really creative about um, without that time. So without this crazy shutdown, Broadway shutdown, I never would have, never would have done that. I never would have given myself the time to learn how to make a dovetail or a yeah, box I joint. I thought I'd hear you say table saw. I, no one, <laughs> no one in my family did. When I started doing this, they were like, who are you? Um, to Jeremy and no. give him back to us. <laughs> and now I've made gifts. For, my entire family are getting gifts that I made with my hands. That is so, so special for both you yeah. and them. I mean, you know, and I do feel like this pause has allowed us just a moment to, to settle and either reflect or dig into some things that are next for us or, you know, interest and other things. Uh, I've been cooking a lot. I love to cook. That's my thing. <laughs> So looking forward for you, what's mm -hmm. next? I mean, it, what are, I know that let's say, let's erase COVID. You yeah. Know, and let's just kind of think about what's next for Jeremy. I heard you mention a little bit about maybe more collaborations with your brothers or maybe more directing. Uh, yes. You know, yeah. yeah. What, what do you, what do you want? What's next? I, I do want both of those. Um, I, I, I want to do more directing. I want to collab with my brothers more. Um, I, I think that what it is, Keisha, is that I really want to feel like at this point in my life that I'm choosing pieces because I want to do them as opposed to because I have to do them. Um, again, the whole like grass is greener. It's really like I'm sure there is going to be at least one person that goes, 
like really Jeremy the, like it was so bad being in the national tour of next to normal and then going straight to uh, uh the Broadway production of Jesus Christ Superstar like nobody nobody really knows your journey right that's right so um but what I yeah what I want to do is is choose for myself better um and I think that's a lesson for everyone that that there's you know because of because it's so scary this business um that you never think you're going to get another job again you'd like every time one finishes you think well that was it i've managed to fool those people but i'm never going to fool anybody else again that i have no idea what i'm doing so uh i would like to have a little bit more self self-respect is the wrong word but you know what i mean like the, a little bit more uh, a belief in my own talent and belief in, 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 in what I have to offer. Um, and then do something that I really like to do. I, I also really feel like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way, but you know, I think that part of this, part of our, our reset really has to be about how, um, pe how people are represented on Broadway, um, uh, especially racially, um, but also, uh, gender wise, um, I really feel like, uh, you know, and my, both my parents and my agent are like, Jeremy, remember you're a white man, please shut up. <laughs> but, you know, I really want to be involved with stuff that is um, relevant and that is relatively important. And, and important doesn't mean that it all has to be slave play, which I PS love. Um, it doesn't all have to be hard, but I think that we can tell stories better. Um, and I think that we owe it to ourselves and to the rest of the, the world to tell stories because they need to be told as opposed to telling stories because we think it's a story that is gonna sell or, or we think it's a story that someone's gonna wanna hear. I, I wanna be part of telling stories that, that are gonna make people change and um, feel uh, heard and feel represented and feel and and you know if if our president elect can create a a, a a building full of people that look like our country that Broadway can fill a couple of theaters that look more like that more represent our country and especially New York you know like this city I, I just it's really I, I just really don't want to be part of of the problem that's all that's, right. yeah, well, that's this year for me you know, and again, it's hard because we, I, I, this is what I got. This is what I was handed. This is how I'm um, coming into the world. Um, so, uh, but I, I do think that uh, it's important to me. And, and I agree. And you know that we both feel the same way and yeah. we have to be part of the solution. That's, yeah. you know, part of that, part of what we do and who we are as humans. And so, you know, I, I've been so blessed to know you for so many years now and I, 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 you know, we did one little show together and you still remember me and I, I can't believe it, but it's, <laughs> you have done so much and it's just so kind. You're so kind to even still stay connected. And yes, I'm sure that we have this human connection. We're the same kind of person that believe yeah. in the same values and all of those wonderful things, but you're a, you're a really good guy, Jeremy. You really well, are. Well, you're, you're a really great lady. You're so I feel the exact same way. But you're, you have so, you have so much to offer so many people and just looking where you're at now and then considering of what you're going to accomplish in the next, you know, who knows, right? 30, 40 years. And I will definitely have you on the show. And, um, <laughs> no, and it's so much more to come. I honestly feel like this is after this conversation, I can see these things on paper. You do your research. I want to ask the right questions. So the conversation is really about you, of course. But listening to it, you're on the brink of another entire chapter. And I hope so. so. I'm excited about that for you. I can't wait. And so, you know, looking back, looking ahead, and, and considering the man that you are, the human that you are, what do you want your legacy to be? How do you want to be remembered? I don't know. I think that, uh, well, the, I mean, the big thing is my girls, right? Like that I, I hope to be the kind of person that they would be proud to know, you know, that's, I, that's so beautiful. 
you have two of the most beautiful daughters. I don't just, I they truly them. are. <laughs> they really, really are. <laughs> they just, I look on Instagram and, of course, social media and see you guys and just watching them grow up. It's, they're beautiful. And so lucky to have you. And in return, you have them. It's an amazing. Yep. It's I'm amazing. very lucky. It's a gift. Absolutely. And so where can we find you? Where can my listeners find you? Where can we keep in touch with you? And we'll definitely list these things out on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, I, I, I am still pretty afeard of social media, but I, uh, I, uh, with much reticence on Instagram, um, mostly because of my kids and because of making things out of wood. Um, so that's the big place. Then my web, my website, jeremykushner.com, which has not been updated in, well, in a pandemic, I think probably there's probably been a whole pandemic. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, um, yeah, those are, those are the two best places to find me. And then go and check out um, my brother's movie. It really, I, I really, I would love to hear people's thoughts on it. Um, uh, I, I'm really proud of it. And I, I think it's also a, a, not a bad conversation starter. Now that being said, um, it's about two white men. Um, so yes, I know what I just said. And also I've just, I'm, I'm also selling a movie that's about two white men, but it's about a, it's about a, a conversation that these, the, the two straight white guys don't have very often about where, you know, what it means to be a, a grown person um, in this world. So uh, yeah, go check that out and then go check out my albums. It's been a long time since I've made my own music. I, I never give that up either. I'm always sort of going back there going like, do I still, do I have something to say right now? Um, you know, I had a lot more to say music musically when I was angsty in, in my twenties. Um, now I, I always feel like I love singing and I love writing music, but uh, it's hard. Yeah. You <laughs> it's just hard. have other, other stories to tell. There's other stories. Yeah. Other stories yeah. to tell. That's yeah. kind of part of that. Again, that life cycle and evolution. I can't thank you enough, sir. Thank you, love. Yeah. It was a pleasure. This was super fun. Oh, well, I mean, let's do it again. And maybe we can focus on just one topic, you know, anytime, anytime you want to, I think that would be fair. You just have so much to offer. And, uh, you know, I'm inspired, of course, every time I talk to you, but let's do it again. We'll get together and have a conversation and focus on something else and just keep the conversation going. Okay. I would love that. Hey, have a great holiday. Take care of yourself and I will definitely connect with you soon. Okay. Love you. Thank you, Jeremy. Take care.